Now it is my pleasure to introduce Chantel Bradford to the stage. My name is Chantel Bradford, and I would like to give you a little insight into my life. Growing up in Vallejo, California, it was my mom, my older brother, and I for the first eight years of my life. None of our fathers were permanent, and like all single moms, she did the best she was able to do. There were a lot of difficult scenarios I could remember, like domestic violence. Although it wasn't in my household, I was a witness to it, and still to this day, it's a vivid memory. Addiction consumed families and left a lot of young children in the system. If they were lucky, their families would step in. Public funding for schools, after school programs, and recreational programs were scarce. I remember having 40 kids in one classroom with one teacher. I attended a total of three schools from the ages six to 10. And regardless of if we could read, write, or were able to pronounce our words correctly, we continued on to the next grade. California's No Child Left Behind initiative, though well-meaning, though well-meaning, left me behind. It wasn't until we moved to Washington did I excel because of one teacher who took interest in me by tutoring me until I caught up. My mom fell on rough times and did what she felt was best for my brother and I which was to live with my Nana. It took a lot of love and understanding for her to make that choice, to provide a better life for us. My Nana had been a preschool teacher for the past 25 years, and even while in her 50s, she provided for us and made sure we were all well taken care of. Once we went back to staying with my mom, there weren't many jobs, no rent control, and funding for those in need was low. My younger sister was born, and one day, we all went to spend some family time and stay the night with my Nana, who lived a few blocks away. The next morning, we returned to find our house had burnt down. All we had left were the clothes on our back and a few items that weren't destroyed in the fire. All of our pictures, clothes, shoes, blankets, and memories were gone. Often I think to myself, if we hadn't spent the night, we may not have been here today. And I can honestly say we are blessed. During this time, our lives became hectic. We never went without food in our stomachs or a roof over our heads, but the stress of having to figure out where to get the money for the hotel was my mom's main focus. There's no real definition of homeless, but that's what we were. My family was in an unstable situation with few belongings and uncertainty of when we would have to move again. When I was nine, I had to catch two city buses by myself to reach my scheduled school bus. We couldn't exactly tell the school district our situation because we were out of school or we were out of district lines and I would have to switch schools again. Vallejo is rich in culture, family, friends, and memories and equally full of negative influences. My mom began to realize this wasn't the lifestyle she wanted for us. We faced some pretty hard times, and luckily, we're able, luckily we were able to overcome that period, but we wanted a fresh start. We relocated to Bremerton in 2000. I was in the fifth grade. I did well in middle and high school. I played sports and was even offered a partial scholarship. I had a teacher by the name of Tim Albee, he taught us how critical it was to inform ourselves of the world's current events and to think about our financial futures. I took note of all the major businesses and financial firms filing bankruptcy, getting sold, and merging. It was now 2008, and we were in a full-blown recession. After considering the world's events, the cost of school, and my family, I decided not to take the offer. Although I had the opportunity to leave my town, to explore, and to have the college experience, I knew in reality to weigh my options. I had to decide, did I want the experience, which would equal me going to school, homework, basketball practice, working, and ultimately being in debt, or staying with my family, going to a community college, saving, then transferring once I was ready. 
I chose my family. Unfortunately, over half my classmates that did leave home for college returned within the first year. They were exhausted, and their tuition had become another family burden. My life changed dramatically once I had my son. It was time to seriously ask myself, what am I going to do for our future? His well-being had now became my main concern. I knew my child shouldn't need for anything, and it was my responsibility to make sure of it. I had a job, but had reached the highest position that I could with my current skill set and education. I'd rolled into a community college, and at the same time heard about the Europe program. I took a leap of faith after learning about all the amazing opportunities, the support, and the overall experience. I earned my internship at Russell Investments, and I was unsure if I would be able to meet the job requirements. In retrospect, I had all the skills needed, specifically knowing how to ask good questions and my willingness to learn. I feel a bit foolish now. How lucky could I have been to have so much guidance and all of these people in my corner? Because of the experience I had growing up, I learned to prioritize my needs versus my wants, and that being a good person doesn't prevent you from facing hard times. I look back at the morning after the fire, and I've learned to value life, family, and well-being over possessions. Being able to relocate to a better place made me appreciate new opportunities, adapt to them quickly, and maximize what I can get out of them. I've learned to be strong and assertive, but to not let that overshadow my spirit of generosity. One of the dominant narratives about millennials is that we are lazy, unmotivated, and entitled. For the past 11 months, some of us have traveled for hours each way to get to work. We've built relationships and are constantly trying to learn new things. I would suggest that my fellow millennials on the stage behind me are hardworking, diverse, loyal, and would be an asset to any company lucky to have us. We have been faced with challenges, yet we've all overcome them. Our struggles have taught us important life lessons that make us better professionals and people. And what sets us apart is that we've decided that our struggle will not define us, but rather empower us to take on challenges and to strive to make an impact on our communities. Having completed my internship at Russell Investment, I look forward to my next adventure and have already landed a job. I plan to continue my studies and will go to school while I'm working until I complete my associates and eventually my bachelor's degree. Although things are changing fast, I feel ready to take life on and to find a way to use the skills I've gained within the last year to be successful. And I know that I can speak for my fellow graduates when I say that our drive, our struggle, our family, and our supporters are what keeps us motivated. Thank you to each and every one of you.